Welcome to the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show, a broadcast service of globalbusinessnews.net. Now, here's your host, Ed Cohen. Happy New Year. This is Ed Cohen in San Diego. It's uh, 30th of uh, December, year 21. Can't wait for 22 and better things and better health for everybody. Our very special guest today is Diane Devitt, and she is a professional in the world of production of events. And now she's an author, and she's getting into uh, a new thing in February, uh, which I'm going to ask her about in about 30 seconds, and all about being certified as a business meeting producer. Hi, Diane Devitt. How are you, Ed? Great. Thanks for having me today. It's good to Great. see you. Yeah, Happy New Year. So I, I have a, a lot of information about you, and we want to make sure we get it right. So you are uh, recognized as a, an author, a consultant, a speaker, uh, but much more a producer. So when I say producer, what does that conjure up in your head? Someone who makes things happen. So in my professional career, I produced very high level meetings and events, and now I'm actually producing my own events. So uh-huh. doing yeah. it for yourself rather than for others. So does that mean like a webinar thing? Uh, yes. So when, so for example, when, when COVID first descended on us, Ed, and I saw the meeting and events industry spiraling down. <laughs> yeah. Um, <Me> too. <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. I, I, I mean, my first knee jerk reaction was we just have to do something. We have to get, we have to communicate with people because they were lost. What do I do? And, you know, unbeknownst to me, I was one of the first people to jump into the space, you know, for the masses connected with a colleague of mine who's actually been in the space for a while. And we started to produce two to three hour programming for the industry this was even before the triple P was, was, uh, you know, created, like, what do you do legally? What do you do that? But um, listen, you, you're the media person, you know, um, how it's very fulfilling when you can deliver information to people that helps them. And we continued doing those programs through June through for six months. So it was good. Well, that, that's really good. So Diane Devitt has been a guest on Global TV Talk Show several times. Uh, we've talked about media training, media presence. And uh, so, but first, let's talk about the book that you authored, What Color Is Your Event? So this event, uh, well, I've got a red, uh, sort of a Tuscany red background, and you, you have a sparkling blue with the glasses to match. So how do you describe the difference between my background and your background? Well, is, is there a difference? Well, there's dramatically a difference. Yours is yours is a, like a, a, a sepia tone, right? And brown is a very grounding color. So it gives a feeling of security to people when they're speaking with you, right? I mean, and and for me, the I mean, blue and royal blue, well, royal blue, you know, what more can I say, right? So... <laughs> But blue is also a color that is uh, calming, you know, and it's but it, this is a more regal effect. And it and it's uh, it's a color that is 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 spark some kind of emotional response versus a pastel blue type of thing. But when I did write the book, Ed, I wrote it, too, from a um, analogy point of view, obviously, color meaning personality and um you know, how, how effective is it? So uh, business people are your targets, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, large scale, you have produced major events. I mean, when you produce a major event, I'm talking mega bucks, but also mega headaches because (laughs) there's so many moving parts, right? So many moving parts, you know, building, building an event is is like creating a film right or a theater or or a building you know an architect goes in and 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 analyzes the people and their behavior and how they're going to move and where they should move effectively and from a production and an event design and planning point of view 
it's the same concept with the caveat of if you're planning and producing an event for the CEO of Edwin Goldwyn, you know, Ed, Ed Cohen Productions, right? Or, or, or Microsoft or any major company, you need to make sure that the vision and the objectives and the goals that, that the company needs to accomplish are realized through the, through the event. So it's a lot of moving parts. So let's jump back to the certificate that you're being awarded uh, starting in late February with a, um, uh, what is it, a, a seminar? Well, anyway, right? it's a, yes, so it's a, yes, well, I'm not, well, yeah, so just, just to say it, I actually um, created a certificate. I, I've been a professor at a leading university in New York for over 30 years, and I was one of the first, and, and, um, and coupled with my my own experience, you know, uh, with the ups and downs and working on very different events, I decided to create a certificate in the business of meetings and events. So it's, it's different from a certification. And I'm very clear with people on that. A certification comes from an accredited association or wow. an institute, you see? So you can, that's where you get your three initials or four initials after your name. What my certificate will do is give class hour credit, class hours toward to people who have the accreditation, who have to maintain it, number one. Or number two, for example, I was on the, you know, had a call yesterday with someone and they said, oh my gosh, we're, we've been planning events and a very senior position, by the way, never had formal training, didn't know the business training of it. We really want to take the course. So it's for... It's for meetings and events professionals, yes, but it's for anyone in communication, advertising, PR, marketing, anyone who's responsible for bringing people together for a business reason that they have to also have results, yeah, that, that are measurable. Okay, and your website? DianeDevitt.com. And, you can- and, and it will be on the website under certificate the end of January, the beginning of February. Yes. Okay. Now you co-authored a book called To Lead, Success Strategies for Women. Do you happen to have that book? Well, I just happen to have a copy on my desk here, right? (laughs) Well, now that is good. Now Call to Lead. uh, So you didn't write the whole book. You compiled it and edited it and put it together. We, um, so it was a collaborative work. There were, there, there were 18 women all together. We were all business leaders, global too. I mean, one in London, one in China, one in, I mean, really um, um, impressive. I, I met, I met and learned from them <laughs> and oh, what we, yes. And what we did is we all had, we were all assigned a chapter. Um, my chapter is on creative leadership. Others were mindful leadership or strategic leadership. So it's different perspectives for women and men, um, you know, in the business world, what is, what, what tips would we give you? Or no one wants advice (laughs) unless they ask for it, but let's just share some insight that we all collaboratively experienced. Okay. Let's take 30 seconds here, or maybe 29 seconds. And, and I want you to uh, look at uh, me here. Um, And so I've got this background of uh, what, what we call here Tuscany red and then this brown wood paneling. And um, I've got this yellow light on my head over here, (laughs) but I'm wearing a black shirt. Now, earlier today, when I got up, I was looking in the closet and said, what color is my thing today? You know, and I would look at green and then I looked at an uh, sort of an aqua. uh, And then I looked at a blue, blue and a blue stripe. And then I looked at yellow, and then I looked at a white shirt. I said, oh, I know Diane is sick of seeing me in black, but I'm the most comfortable wearing this jersey. So there's a couple of things to say about that. Number one, that's your brand. <laughs> All right? People see you, and they see that. And I think that that's uh, important. You know, like, what is your look? What is your, what is your brand? So if black is your thing, that's it. It's interesting because sometimes I've been interviewed by people and 
and it's and it's it makes me smile because the subject of creativity of which I'm you know I that's my thing I'm innovative I help I help people think creatively for new and innovative ideas whether it's the name of a uh, of a new product or it's it's how to do something different but when people just like you oh what should I wear I'm talking to Diane about creativity and some of them come on with these awful outfits <laughs> they're so and I'm like oh my gosh stick to what you're comfortable with it it makes it easier for everybody right yeah <laughs> so yeah yeah no you look just fine and but I one other thing because you bring it out is the Tuscany red I'd say to people that's your background then just research Tuscany and all yeah. the colors of Tuscany and if you wanted to add a green vine or a Roman kind of uh, Tuscan kind of vase or there you go there you have it Ed so we got it when we you go <laughs> we we were we were in Tuscany on on holiday uh, some, <laughs> year, some years ago and see these colors so we, we saw this uh, the China set you yep. know, plates and whatever and uh, so must be 10 years now maybe more and we says okay we got it redecorate the condo and so what colors are we going to do so oh we would have a coffee and we said oh how about these colors there you go well, <laughs> you well see, i see how the yellow comes in it's sort of like I see it. but it's you see a, but it, it, it's a very specific yellow right yeah it's kind of pale kind of like a sun a golden a uh, uh, sunflower yellow good. yeah oh that's a good one yeah sunflower yellow Okay, so the, we're, we're, what we're obviously talking about, audience, is looking professional on camera and uh, how that has an effect on what people are listening to and whether or not they just stare at you, but they don't comprehend that darn thing you're saying because of the distractions or because of what? Uh, too, too present, maybe. Maybe, present. like, I'm not the story here, it's you. Well, yes. And when we're online and we're in a meeting, it, it, it's, we have evolved, you know, we've evolved a lot since COVID hit us and we were all catapulted into this online space. Right. And some of us are more comfortable with it from a production point of view. And some of us know that if I pull back here, I am, but if I really move forward and I'm in your face, that's like all caps on a text, isn't right, it? Right, right, all right. All yeah, right. So know. It's you screaming. see, yeah, it, you're. I'm. I'm like saying, what are you talking about? Now, at the same time, if I want to be funny, or I think I'm going to be funny, you know, and I go like this, and I do something like that, it's a whole different body language that comes across. So the body right. language online, yeah, it. You know, media presence. And going back to your question, Ed. Uh, from my production, and this is the thing that first just jolted me and many of my colleagues is people need to understand this is not going away. This medium is not going away. If anything, it's going to get more and more common that you'll just have a face call. You don't even think about a phone call anymore. That's from grandma's time, right? Um, and it's interesting because I was just on a call recently with and it was a personal call and with friends and there's you know more family and friends type of thing and still people blocked out their screen you know they stopped the video or they were clearly lying on the sofa and you know the view was like this um it's distracting oh it's disgusting also <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the thing is that it's, 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 it's a very big point of um, personal choice of how you want to be present, regardless if it's personal or professional, both have impacts to people. I don't want to see my closest friend in her, you know, on her sofa or in her bed, like, talk to me <laughs> and give me the impression that I'm like, you're paying attention to me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so media presence. Yes. Uh, I'm looking at some notes here and uh, it's a very specific audience. So get ready to take notes here. Ready? <laughs> so media presence is here to stay because of the need to communicate across time and space, across borders, across cultures. And what we say is not important. It's how we say it. And are you getting it? What's your take? Okay. So you wrote these questions, these points to me, and I'm going to uh, not make believe that I'm memorizing everything Ah. (laughs) because I'm going to read them. Okay. Who are you on the call with? And next, what kind of conversation is it? And where is your workstation? In other words, here we are, I'm sitting here. Okay. Right, exactly. All right. And then how do you prepare the prep? You know, what do you do before the call begins? And, and why is all this crap important? Okay. So let's go back to, well, I want to interject something. Audience, this is not scripted, as you could tell, <laughs> but we, we've known each other a long time. So um, Bob Fosse. Okay, mm-hmm. the choreographer, director, playwright, mm-hmm. uh, who's uh, not with us anymore. He was so innovative the way he took uh, dance and theatrics and color and light. And it communicated a whole thing. So you remember that, I'm sure. Oh, uh, and pro- probably experienced some of that in a prior life. But um, like Chicago you know, the play Chicago um, and the, the movie um, and then the, the earlier uh, shows by Fosse. That was like groundbreaking. And a lot of people at first were turned off because they were frightened or they were scared. Or, uh, and then it became such an easy way to communicate an idea. Right. Right. So how <laughs> how. <laughs> does this translate to sitting in front of this little green light right now and you and I talking about media presence? Well, you know, th- this is obviously like a 12 hour conversation, but the, the short version is, you know, when I say, who are you on a call with? It'll go back to the original discussion. Like we're having a discussion here, but clearly this show will be out to a global audience and to people who are professionals and, and work and, and are online too much during the day. So do you, and I, and I just thought I'd run a couple of things by you because, you know, do you take the time, for example, with each call to change a background? Oh, that's good. I like that yellow. Does, it, it really does, goes right perfectly with my Tuscany red. All right. But do do these different backgrounds uh, work? If if I'm advertising myself, do I put my name up there? If I want a different kind of environment, do I want it all black? Am I blending in like a talking head? If I'm with a creative group, do I want this? Do I want people's attention? Right. Do I want people to think of John, you know, imagine I so this is it. So all of these different now, if I'm teaching, right, I might put myself off and say, this is Diane Devitt. I'm doing virtual, virtual, you know, media presence for the virtual stage. Right. So coming to that and that's a, you know, zoom and uh, gives you the background and filter option. Uh, but is it necessary for day to day with, a friend, or even like you're like you're speaking to me, Ed. Now, the other side of my office slash studio is a little seating area, which is when I have conversations like this. But for today's conversation, I choose to have the green screen. Um, so I think you have to identify who you're on the call with and what what the objective of the call is. If it's to celebrate, are you going to put something like this in the screen to have people be happy, like a little prop? without distracting them. Because again, we've evolved to a certain space where little props are good, but distractions are really annoying. Um, So what kind of conversation is it? 
if it's a confidential conversation, I don't want this background. If it's a confidential conversation, I want to allow you into my private space. Therefore, my office, you know, or my my sitting area is more is far more appropriate. Um, I didn't want to do a camera change here, but so we'll just keep on because I know people know what I'm I'm talking about. Um, it's not a show. It's I'm letting you into my personal space. And that's important. Uh, but again, I don't want to distract you. I don't want to sit in my kitchen with something going on in the background. And that's what I said, where is your workstation? I still think, and I know it's difficult for some people who are working at home with children, with dogs barking, with this and that, but we're far more acceptable to a dog barking and saying, "Put, you know, please go on mute <laughs> than we were at the beginning, but it still not doesn't make it acceptable. So those kind of things are, you know, when I say, how do you prepare is, is how do you prepare? And it's very hard. I know there are, again, I know there are some young mothers and young fathers out there and people who have family challenges at home, but it's very important how you want to be perceived online uh, as part of the whole online media presence. Right. And the communications, not just, I've got something to say, but a communication, which means two way. It's two way. Not it's a one two way. No. Right. And again, you know, platforms are out there. We are so sophisticated with how we do things now uh, to not have a good media presence at work. And, and many companies are obviously doing training and their production teams are doing training. What I prefer and what I like doing is working with uh, almost just like a senior executive who doesn't want to go to their team, <laughs> who, who said to me like, Diane, so what are those three dots for? And 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 how can I do a virtual background or this and that? Because I find it, let me make it as comfortable as possible one-on-one -on -one for people uh, to just ask questions that they may not know. So, how do you know? How do you know if you don't know, right? Yeah. So how do you prepare? Okay. So for instance, when I'm uh, recruiting uh, people to be on the tuck show, mm -hmm. um, uh, and they don't know me from a hole in the wall, right? Uh, but I give them a link to the website and they see they have, see your previous shows, the others. Um, and then that gives them a couple of days. They warm up, they come back to me if they're interested, and then we go to the next step. So the number one concern and fear is, oh, my God, I'm on camera. What am I going to talk about? And, and are you going to zing me? Uh, and what if I don't like this? Do I just quit? So I lay out uh, what is essentially an engineering approach uh, to uh, an intangible, which is kind of difficult to get your arms around for many people. So it's a step-by-step. -step. And so I ask people to collaborate on the content about which they will be speaking with me. So I give them the opportunity to send me bullet points, not sentences, just bullet points, keywords or phrases that sort of uh, headline what they want me to ask them about during the thing. So this gives them what I call the three C's. Now I'm not talking about me, but this is in relation to prep. The three C's. By them doing that, by them sending me what's important to them in the form of bullet points, I'm giving them comfort and convenience, and I'm giving them some control. So the three C's, comfort, convenience, and control. And so they, once they send that to me, I know they've done the work. And so that means I don't have to do the work. Okay, it makes my job easier. But it also gives them a track to run on and it gives them a convenience and they can prep themselves emotionally to be in front of this camera and actually talk to the world. <laughs> and I remind them now, remember, <laughs> very few people are going to watch their live, but hundreds of thousands will have access to this across 12 months going forward. So be careful, but prep. So when you talk to your people, to your students, <coughs> pardon me, how do you tell them to prep? 
So in the media presence, like I'm coughing right now. So I'm yes, <laughs> have some water, please. Um, in the media, in the media presence. Uh, Sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, in the media presence uh, program, right? Yeah, that yeah. I that I designed. Yeah. First and foremost, there's a checklist. Yeah. And I'll even go a step. Let me go a step <clears throat> even back. Um, Pardon me. Sure. Uh, there is a you. You'll learn. And, and by the way, this is water. Oh, not, not well, water. that well, we have to change the color of that cup. By the way, Ed. Well, we know. I know. We'll edit this up. You need a clear, clear glass. A clear glass or a, a clear black glass or a sunflower yellow glass. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> with with maybe um, a, a a sunflower image. Yeah, right. or blue. We'll figure it out. But um, <laughs> but but anyway, getting back to this again, it's very important. And, and there's a there's like a there's a 10 to 15 uh, point checklist that I that I go over with people before they come before they not before they but before they even progress in the show is just asking them basic questions, you know, such as why are you online? What is when you are online? Who are you online with? That kind of thing. Um, but I'll get back to your show and other producers is no speakers uh, come on to a show without some kind of rehearsal. Now, yours is a different, yours is a, is a talk show, right? So, you, you know, yeah. it's impromptu, you're not going to rehearse. But for a formality or for an event, for a meeting, uh, even for a conversation, doing a lighting check, doing a sound check, making sure people know how to look into the camera, you know, they're still not looking at you on the screen, they're, they're, realizing how ca the camera, how to play with the camera, how that works. Uh, people need that rehearsal time before they come so, on. So what about the, the gimmick of like taking off my glasses and looking closer, yeah. <laughs> you know, and then putting them back on? <laughs> well, if you're making, if you're making a point with your audience and you're connecting with your audience, you know, so what did you think about that? Oh, that's good. <laughs> Yeah, but it's but again, you got to be comfortable. You have to, you know, you want to be comfortable with it, right? But I so to answer your first question, I'd say rehearsals and uh, prep and giving people a list of what's important and and making them. Yeah, to your point, <clears throat> hey, you're going to be with me, but you're going to be exposed to a hundred thousand plus people. So how do you want to be perceived? I know it's pretty scary. So I I wrote a, a New Year's letter, sort of a a big X. I put a big X on my thing and it, it says the time machine, experience the time machine. <laughs> but I, I didn't write the word experience, just an X, you know? So in the olden days, X rated movies were. All right. You know, <laughs> <laughs> right. But the, yeah. So anyway, uh, I did a timeline of when I began uh, my media business and all, but no, no valleys, just peaks. <laughs> so it, it moved quick and it was all uh, G rated. But I see that you are going to produce 17 modules, 45 plus class hours. That is a massive amount of engineering. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. So, so right now we're, you know, thank you. But right now we're launching the course in February. And there'll be about three modules ready at that time. Uh, no, well, all the modules will be ready, but the way that the course will work is that it will drip out every week or two so that a new module will be available then. So it's the intention is that it lasts for a few, a couple of months based on what your time schedule is. So the, this, um, this certificate too is, is more of a, um, I'm creating the differentiation of it is that I'm creating more of a community with it. Uh, when people take and invest in the certificate, they'll get the knowledge, obviously, but um, I will be available once a week like this, an open chat room, anyone who's taking it. And then once a month, I'll interview people who are either sponsors or partners or experts or industry leaders. And so and then, and then they'll have the mastermind with it. So it's really more of a, of a community. 
Um, it, let's go back to mastermind. Is that a group or is that, uh, uh, so, uh, is that uh, somebody like Yoda? <laughs> no. So, you know, mastermind, a mastermind is, is many, uh, many populations have what they call masterminds. They're, they're basically groups. They're confidential groups where you uh, share and grow and participate. You get group feedback um, in them. But, you know, in, in my case, I created one last November. So it's a little over a year old with women in the meetings and events industry. And we, we grow, you know, we, we read business books, we discuss concepts, we share our experiences and we help one another uh, to grow. And that's actually, that's actually one of the goals of the called to lead book, Ed, is that we work with corporations to go in with their women's groups with their, you know, with any kind of group and that we can do training and leadership on. Yeah. So let me ask you a couple of pointed questions here. Uh, Are you going to talk about fee or you want to have a discussion first with your prospects? Uh, Fee for the certificate class. It hasn't been a hundred percent developed yet, but Mm -hmm. it will be somewhere around the 2000 to $2,500 range for the 45 plus hours. Yeah. So do you have a, a picture of that certificate you can hold up? I don't, but I sent it to you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. <laughs> okay. I, I will get it on the, so, uh, yes. So uh, when you ask the question, you can hold it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. And, uh, um, who would know about the value of that other than the person themselves? Uh, are you going to be doing some additional PR, not just with me, but with others yes. Uh, yes. that will um, tout, not from a promotional point of view, but from an explanation about why it's important? Yes, I'll be doing, I uh, have a, a social media campaign and I have a media campaign with some of the industry uh, publications and people who know they'll be interviewing me. So, so there'll be a, uh, there'll be a whole initiative with it and people who know me and, you know, I've been teaching for 30 years as well. And, uh, and involved in the industry and in different leadership roles. So I think just getting the word out and, and, uh, marketing it wisely to people who can benefit is what the goal you know what our goal is so yeah so now a couple of questions okay (laughs) what about me or you standing up rather than sitting down you know of course it's the camera that how do you know i'm not standing oh i don't know yeah that's right (laughs) well that would be a good thing right but you know when when you first of all there's they've designed now um, over the past, you know, months, such wonderful um, desktop compatible uh, devices that you can put your monitors on and your keyboards, and they just r- they raise up with ease. So I actually am in the process of I have one, and I'm just going to be installing it myself because standing up is again, it's a different approach. But as a teacher and as an instructor, standing up is important to me because I'm the most comfortable when I'm standing up. So I'm going to. (laughs) Don't forget to adjust your camera. Okay, so I've got one of these risers. Yeah, but you have to adjust your camera with it, right? I I just lost my head. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) No, you didn't. You did good. Okay, standing up. See? Good. And, And I can animate. And you can animate. And again, you know, it's it's. So again, like I sit on a, on a, a basically what I call it, a, a, an armless chair, right? It's a small armless chair on rollers. But I, when I want to be animated, I sit a certain way so that my posture allows me to move. And that's another thing too. Yeah, well, it's hands. breathing. It's breathing. Yeah, it's breathing, but it's also movement. And again, when we first came online, using hands was like, ah, don't use your hands. But now- we're more comfortable with this because well, it because it's become conversant. If, if we push so, this thing back a little bit, then yeah, oh, then you're my looking hand, good. My you're hands good, are Ed. there. Yeah, you, ooh, cool. I, I'm actually. I wasn't now, Ed. Six wasn't foot that, eight. Wasn't that easy? Oh, I'll push that back. <laughs> there you go. 
Yeah. This is cool. All, all kinds of tricks based on what you're, where you're going with it, right? Yeah. So, so if we get this camera lens to, you know, one of these clip on camera things, I guess is what I need here. So you could see me moving around and see my background and, you know, things like that. Uh, and we could even dance together. <laughs> Look, there's so many, again, there, there's so many devices out now. Some of them you put your, your, some people are on their, you know, their, their devices, right. And they connect their device. And, and now there's a motion detector that follows you. Oh, so wow. I actually, I actually have that for when I'm teaching that my iPhone will be on top. Uh, it connected to this and it follows me with a Bluetooth connection. So there's all sorts of fabulous things. There's another thing that I just <clears throat> learned about last week that I love. It, it actually is a magnet. It, it, it connects to your ceiling and, it, and it's just one wire that hangs down and then you connect your device to it so you can stand up in front of it and it's a magnet comes from your ceiling so it doesn't take up any floor space. I mean, it's really, so there's a lot of good things out there uh, well, for, that's, that's from a media presence point yeah. of view. So you don't yeah. have to sit all day. You could actually say, and it's not good to sit all day, right? We all know we have to get up every 20 minutes, 40 minutes. We have right. to, right. Or we have to sit right. on a bouncing ball or we have to do something right. to keep ourselves at, you know? Right. So here, <laughs> I'll, I'll be back in a minute. I want to show you something. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Hi, this is Ed, and I thank you for tuning in to Global TV Talk Show, a uh, unit on globalbusinessnews.net. Uh, we uh, broadcast to the world, as you know by now. So I wanted to make sure that you understand that our programs are advertising supported. We're grateful for co-sponsors, advertisers. Um, they have a marketing budget coupled with a strong desire to be associated with our top quality program. And of course, I'm grateful. Thank you. So for the next few minutes, you're going to see some uh, commercials. It's uh, mostly very low key. And uh, our prices are very, very reasonable. Uh, our exposure for the advertisers go 12 months and beyond. Some of our advertisers have been with us since March, April of 2020. And Google Analytics has tracked uh, over 125,000 what they call audience page views, which means you looking at this page, that's a page view. Now, if you happen to go to one of our other shows, or to our radio broadcasts, or to our newspaper or magazine, those become additional page views as measured by Google Analytics. And so when they say 125,000 since uh, spring of 2020 up through uh, Labor Day a month ago, that's pretty good numbers. And uh, the past 30 days, Google Analytics has measured uh, just under 6,000 audience page views. Uh, and that, according to them, is a 42% increase in audience participation over the month uh, of August. So thank you very much. Well, here's our advertisers, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes or so, and we'll proceed with this interesting conversation. Thank you. This episode from the Meeting Room of Global TV Talk Show is brought to you by The Bridge School, the accredited international online private school of choice at bridgek12.org Porch Light -like Rental and Destination Services Reduce your renter lump sum or managed relocation costs Visit them at porchlightrental.com And by Airs.com With our full range of services, we can help design and manage your international relocation. Find us at airs.com. Primestone Partners, featuring corporate, government, and developer housing solutions, as well as senior level advisory services. Find them at primestonepartners.com. And by International Auto Source, 
We are the vehicle experts for expats, featuring all major brands of automobiles with flexible solutions and financing. On the web at intlauto.com. Become a global player in your field. Cross Culture To Go provides virtual support for your global business and career success. We can help you thrive in 140 plus countries and markets. On the web at crossculturetogo.com. Something that's really neat is that the Bridge School partners with various organizations to provide learning for their students. For example, we partner with a major ballet company and we are able to enroll several of their students into our school. So now not only is the student able to participate in a school and have a seamless transition while they're very active in their ballet career, but now they have um, other dancers that are with them that are doing some of the same courses. So it's almost becoming a, a camaraderie where they're taking similar courses, they're working together on their ballet, and really being able to form this great partnership with these organizations to provide a needed service. A lot of times um, there are student athletes who will spend hours and hours at the gym or um, at the, the basketball courts, wherever it is. And if they're attending a traditional school, they're in school from eight to three. They get a quick snack and then they're at the gym for three to four hours in the evening. Coming to us and having that partnership, they're able to break that up throughout the day. They can have a morning practice, get some schooling in, have an afternoon practice, finish their schooling in the evening. So there's that flexibility. And additionally, if there are tournaments or performances, it's fantastic because if there's a week where they have shows straight through, they can take that week off of learning and then pick back up when they're done. So it offers the this great flexibility and for the program owners of these sports leagues it is a win-win situation for them because they see this need they see this need that their students need to make sure that they are obtaining the grades necessary to be successful adults in in our country and in other countries but it provides them an environment where they can be successful at both Hi, I'm Sergei Gorbatov. I'm Angela Lane. Together we are researchers, writers and practitioners in the field of human resources. And we've also been multi-country, multi-assignment career expats. We owe our professional development and growth to a very large extent to the international assignment opportunities that we have had. But in a world where distributed work may become the norm, we also want to understand what will happen to the nature, duration and purpose of international assignments? Together with our colleague Julian Delzell from the University of South Carolina, we're undertaking a study on the future of expatriation. And we value your contribution. You can participate in this important study by completing a simple 10-minute questionnaire. Access the questionnaire by typing in your browser tinyurl.com forward slash expert study. That's tinyurl.com forward slash expert study. You can also find the link here on Ed's website next to this video. Thank you for joining us in this study. In return for your contribution, we'll provide you with a copy of our research. And of course, you'll be invited to an exclusive webinar hosted by Ed, where we will share our findings right here on Global Business News. And so please go to tinyurl.com forward slash expat study. Take the survey so that we can better understand the future of expatriation. Here we have a weight, an eight, yeah. eight pound weight. So right. I'm going to be doing push-ups here while I'm Good talking you. with you. Yeah, and I'll use the other hand. Good for okay, you. Okay, so, you know, pretty soon we'll produce a show on fitness. Well, you could also put that, <laughs> you could also put that weight by your feet 
and put it on your foot and you can oh. lift it up with both feet and then you're wow. exercising your legs. So let's not get off on that. That's a whole nother show about wellness, <laughs> which I'm, you know, I'm a big advocate in. So, and it's also part of my media training. My media presence is taking care of yourselves from a, from a sensory point of view. Uh, I have, so, but that's a whole thing. I, I you know, a whole different conversation. Um, but yeah, so so there's a lot to learn, but again, this is not going away. Okay, so to sum up now, as we come to a close in this uh, year and this edition, I want to welcome you back in to uh, do this on, in a series of some kind that's comfortable for you, uh, and we could target topics in advance, always make a, adjustments if we need to, but this way people can plan and you can maybe tie it into one of your uh, classes, uh, especially as hopefully um, the pandemic uh, wanes and people can feel comfortable about uh, going out and attending a class in person, not just online. Definitely hybrid is here to stay. Wouldn't you agree? Hybrid? Oh, there's no question. Yes. Yeah. No question. Yeah. And I and I think, you know, that that's uh again from a planning and a pro production and a meetings point of view, it's very much a part of the certificate class will be how to identify, and this is again moving forward, but even now during during COVID's you know peak times, how do you identify what warrants an in-person meeting? when will it be the most effective versus what can we do online that will achieve the objectives and goals from a business point of view? And that's, that's what it's all about, right? We have had, um, since Labor Day, which is around the 1st of September, which is uh, September, October, November, December, it's four months, mm -hmm. okay? We have had uh, almost 30,000 audience page views on, on global TV um, since that time, according to Google Analytics, including 6,108 <laughs> over the past 30 days, according to Google Analytics, just this morning. And so uh, a lot of people, not billions, but a lot of business people are going to see this program going forward. Uh, we'll, we'll circulate it through our direct connection through LinkedIn is uh, just under 18,000, but uh, more so I'm a member of 92 groups. <laughs> some, <laughs> some are better than others for this purpose, but the primary business groups that will see this program are involved in talent management as a provider, such as lawyers, or tax people, or consultants, or tech people. Mm -hmm. uh, or trainers, uh, or health experts, uh, lawyers, candlestick makers, and bakers. <laughs> but uh, it could be a, a, a half a million across 12 months, and some on a repetitive uh, basis uh, through our YouTube channel and linked out to the other media. Knowing this, are you scared of that kind of reach? Uh, are you worried? Uh, in other words, a lot of people tell me off camera that what if I don't like two months from now what we did two months prior? Uh, so I tell them, oh, just tell me and we can make some snips. All right. It may cost some some production money, but it's, it's not a lot. But we've got to cover the cost. Uh, and we do that as a service. So how can you, what would you say about that? Number one, and how, the engineering of that customer service approach, of course, it's a good idea, uh, but, you know, to deliver more value from what people actually pay for. Um, from your teaching point of view, what kind of service do you provide to your customers so that if they're going to spend a couple of $3,000, that's not chicken feed. That's a lot of money. And so what are they going to get out of that going forward? I think there's, there's two questions you asked, right? And so 
So the first, the first uh, topic of you know the reach of this program and am I concerned or nervous about it? The answer is no. I'm actually very grateful to it. Uh, I'm grateful to the program because without exposure online, how do we get to meet other people or help other people? Or how can someone, there might be somebody watching this that says, oh, gee, I'd really like to train my team in meetings and events. Um, and here's Diana, a, a 30 plus year professor offering her own certificate class. So there's some, there's some credence to that. So they'll, what, you know, so, they'll get the link to the show and they could always. Oh yeah. 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 But what I'm saying right. is when you ask me how I feel, like I feel very right, right. grateful because I love to teach. I, I love to teach. It's one of my, the most fulfilling things in my life is seeing a student grow um, any level, including myself. <laughs> So what I'm about a, feedback? So you like the feedback from your students? Yes, I do. But, you know, again, to your question, yes. So, and, and again, and, and again, even with the book, the call to lead book, to get out there. And, and what if, a, what if a, women, a woman leader in business is watching this and says, gee, I'd love to bring the 17 women in and, and once a month collaborate with them or have them lead a facilitation with the women in my team, you know, that could help them because everybody is always looking for something new and how to train people or how to work with people. But the other thing is this, um, what I love about video and what I love about nowadays is that I don't, I don't have to be perfect online. Like I don't want to be perfect online. In fact, if someone says, Oh, look at Diane, she's a real person. Yeah. That's what I want people to, to leave with. Like I, I can only share my expertise in terms of the media presence. I, I worked in production. I worked with CEOs, presidents, all level events, Olympics. But I was in the ballroom with people when they physically got on a stage, giving them prep and, and helping them sound better, look better, how to speak into a mic. So the authenticity of what I do, but more how I can help people is what I appreciate coming through. So it doesn't, no, it doesn't scare me at all. So, uh, so on TV uh, and on in theater in particular, um, there's a, a thing called Mark on the stage, right? Yep. In, mm -hmm. in other words, and hit the Mark, right? In other words, don't go on that Mark, go on this Mark, right? And, and there's a reason for that, right? There's a lot of reasons. Well, on the stage, on any stage, right, that's being filmed, there's glow tape and there are tape. Yes, exactly. So that the actor and the speaker on a stage knows exactly where to stand because all of the, again, all of the cameras are focused on that one spot. So it gives them the, uh, it gives them the, the maximum right uh results to have and, and the lighting more people standing here and there right, right. when the lighting is over here you don't want to be there right <laughs> right and instead of looking this way look at look, what just right. happened look at the lighting so that you know there's, look again, at the I shadow think, right then, <laughs> exactly, uh, exactly. Oh, my hair out of place or what but it's uh, <laughs> the, the, it all counts and you don't have to be afraid of that but you need to uh, understand it. And that's what I call the engineering of the intangible. And it's really difficult to get your arms around that. But when you think of it that way, in other words, building blocks like Legos. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. So there's a, so there's a, there was a lot in that question, Ed. <laughs> it was a loaded question. <laughs> so no, I'm not afraid. Yes, people, you know, people need to know that, other people don't know everything about I learn I I'm always learning tips and tricks online. I I'm a perpetual learner uh, with the with the groups I'm in and and uh, and that's what's wonderful about nowadays, right? So so yeah, so uh, I I think there's a lot out there, but no, I'm very grateful for it. I'm grateful to be here, and I'm grateful for your acknowledgments, and and I'm I love. I love to uh, work and see people make, make it happen. <laughs> All right, Diane, David, happy new year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Come back again.
Thank you. Okay, this is Ed in San Diego, and that's Diane. Where are you, in Chicago? Chicago area now. New York girl, Chicago area. <laughs> okay, stay healthy. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Happy New Year. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you for joining us in the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show. Have a wonderful day, and stay safe.